If five is added to the length and width of a rectangle, then the perimeter is increased by how much? Now, a lot of you um, are reading this prom and you're like, I can answer this, but I just kind of forgot what the perimeter means. Well, I'll tell you what the perimeter uh, means in just one second. But first, I want to give you a full opportunity for you to answer this all on your own. Matter of fact, if you have the right answer, put that into the comment section. Then obviously, I'm going to walk through exactly how to do this problem in just one moment. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. To answer this question, we need to precisely understand what the perimeter is, okay, and what a rectangle is. Now, you know, most of you are like, oh, I know what a, what, the, what a rectangle is. Well, I don't uh, doubt that. And uh, most of you probably know what the perimeter is, but let's go ahead and start with the perimeter first. Okay, so here is a rectangle, okay? And I'm gonna get into what the perimeter means in a second. But first, uh, I wanna really be precise here about the notation that I'm using. So uh, if I said, what shape is this? Okay, now I didn't, I just kind of sketched it out freehand. Most of you would say, well, that's a rectangle. Well, I said, okay, well, if it's a rectangle, all right, so let's say I have five here and two here. So uh, just as this is right here, what would be the measure of this and this? Okay, well, let's hold that thought for a second because I wanna, I wanna get back to this because this is a little math uh, trick that, uh, well, not a math trick, but uh, this is something that comes up on a lot of tests, okay? Uh, on math exams, they try to trick students and I'll show you, uh, or I'll explain myself in just one second, but let me get back to this figure and then we'll get back over here. So this is a rectangle. Now this precisely in mathematics in geometry is a rectangle. It's a four-sided polygon, okay? And uh, a rectangle, the angles in a rectangle are right angles, 90 degrees. And the opposite sides of uh, uh, in a rectangle are what we call congruent, okay? That's a fancy uh, geometry term. Uh, it just basically means equal measure, okay? So if this side is five, then this side is five, and then if this side is two, this side is two. So opposite sides in a, uh, a rectangle are congruent. Now, I know this is a rectangle because I have these 90 degree angles here, okay? Now, another way I could express this is by putting a little line here and a line here. In geometry, this means that this side, this, uh, uh, side and this side are the same, and then if I go two right here, because these are different sides, that indicates that this side and this side are the same. So without these notations, okay, either this uh, right angle notation or these notations, you can't assume that something in fact, just because it looks like a rectangle is indeed a rectangle. So let me get back to my little um, kind of side comment here, right? So uh, this is again, very common on tests like the SAT or ACT. They try to trick students. They'll be like, okay, uh, what is this side and what is this side of this um, figure? Okay, they'll call this a figure. And, you know, a lot of students, well, boy, this is a rectangle. This has got to be five and this has got to be two. Well, no. Okay, we don't know that this is a rectangle. Okay, because, uh, you know, it looks like a rectangle, but unless you have this specific notation in there, okay, uh, you cannot uh, classify this as a rectangle. So be very careful. Uh, for those of you that still have to take tests, uh, just because something looks like something, okay, uh, doesn't mean uh, that in fact it is. You have to have the precise notation. And just one other kind of um, thing that comes to mind too is parallel lines. This is another classic uh, type of problem. So here, these lines look parallel, right? So if I draw a little line that crosses through these parallel lines, they're like, okay, these lines are parallel. In other words, uh, they're not going to touch one another. But uh, what they do, not what they do, but those tests, you know, those tricky uh, test makers, they'll draw two, they'll draw two lines that don't quite look parallel. And but when they put the information in, it, the lines are actually indeed parallel. But they'll kind of tweak the figure just to try to throw you off and confuse you. Okay, the whole point of what I'm trying to say here 
is in geometry, okay? There's very precise notation that you need to know. So if you're interested in uh, learning basic geometry or more advanced level geometry, and there's a pretty big dis um, difference uh, in geometry courses. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna le leave links to both my pre-algebra course. You'll find that again in the description. I'll leave the link in the description. I have a whole couple chapter on basic geometry. That's like surface area, area perimeter, things that we're talking about here. I'll also leave a link to my full geometry course. That's like a high school level geometry. That's a whole different level. Uh, so uh, depending on your interest or what your needs are, you could check out uh, both of those courses. But geometry is a, definitely a very cool course and you gotta understand the notation. All these little tiny things count. So anyways, a little bit, you know, I, you know, a little bit, I went a little bit crazy, I guess, on uh, some of these geometry concepts. But the perimeter of a rectangle, now that we have a rectangle here, is very easy. The perimeter is just the sum total distance around the sides. So to calculate the perimeter of this rectangle, I would just go two plus five plus this two right here, plus this five right there, which of course would be uh, five and five, 10, and two and two, four, so it would be 14, okay? All right, so that is what the perimeter is. By the way, you can find the perimeter of all kinds of crazy figures. Let's say I had something that looked kind of like this arrow thing right here. So if you said, uh, if you were asked to find the perimeter, of this, you would just take this side, plus this side, plus that side, plus that side, plus this side there. Okay, so that's what the perimeter is. And now that we have an understanding of the perimeter, this problem is going to be super easy to solve. Mr. YouTube Math Man, you went through all this explanation to show me the solution. I don't even understand uh, you know, what you're doing here. Well, here's the thing. We need to go back to the problem real quick, okay? So the problem is what? If five is added to the length and width of a rectangle, I don't even need to know the actual length and width of the particular rectangle. All I need to be, um, all I need to do is pay attention to what is the question, okay? Now, I did kind of fail to mention in the beginning of this video that uh, anytime you have a math problem, a math word problem, you want to read it more than a few times and you really need to make sure you understand what the question is asking, okay? Because students get confused and they'll end up doing things that don't pertain to answering the actual question. And the actual uh, question here is, hey, if we add five uh, to the length and width of this rectangle, then the perimeter is increased by how much? Not how much is the actual perimeter, okay? How much is the perimeter going to uh, increase, and I don't even need to know the actual uh, perimeter of a particular uh, rectangle, it's not important. If I add five to the length and width of uh, any rectangle, whatever the perimeter is, the perimeter is going to increase by how much? Well, five plus five plus five plus five, uh, which is 20. Okay, so I did kind of stretch out this uh, problem uh, to kind of review some concepts that I just know a, a lot of students think they understand, uh, or a lot of people uh, think they understand better than they actually do. Uh, probably the number one phrase uh, I heard, um, you know, teaching mathematics, and I'm pretty sure I said it way back in the good old 70s and 80s, is this phrase right here. I knew that. I knew that. I knew that. And uh, probably a lot of you said that phrase as well. In other words, a student will uh, do some work and then they'll turn in the wrong problem or they'll make a little error. And then, you know, they'll come running back to the teacher with their test and they'll just point, look, I knew that. I knew that right there. I just made a mistake. I forgot. I forgot. I knew that. I knew that. Well, here's the deal. If you know something, you have to demonstrate that. So yeah, how do you um, avoid making these kind of errors? Well, you have to focus that is the number one thing uh, that that's that's really the secret to success in all things in life. Okay? Anything you want to do, you have to learn how to focus. So if you are interested in math or if you're a math student or if you're trying to figure out math problems, you know, what you have to do is put yourself in a state of focus. You know, put your phone away for a couple minutes and just quiet think okay and oftentimes you know when you do that it's gonna be a weird feeling because we are so overwhelmed and distracted these days you know it's hard to just get some quiet mental time but if you can get that you'll be shocked on what your brain could come up with you know remember your brain is indeed a supercomputer okay so with that being said I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures thank you for your time and have a great day